And the final slide about personal identity just deals with skepticism. Um, if we go about from the point of view of saying there's no such thing as personal identity, you are not the same person you were when you were a child. You weren't the same person as you were last year, yesterday, or when you walked into the lecture room. Any change makes you a different person. This creates a lot of problems. First, it creates moral responsibility. How can we blame anyone or praise anyone for anything that they did when it was not them? It was a predecessor. I am not the person who stole the money yesterday, so don't punish me. I'm not the person who gave the lousy lecture 20 minutes ago, so don't blame me. So it removes all personal responsibility and moral responsibility from every one of us. So we can't have that as a valid grounds to think what our identity is, is that we're constantly in a state of flux. Concern for our future selves. Why should I go to class? It won't be me who graduates, but a different person. Why buy food? It won't be me who eats it. Why do I have to worry about anyone 10 years down the road? Because that won't even be me. Again, this is what's leading us to this idea of fluid identity. That we're more than just the memories that we have. We're more than just the um, internal core of our values, morals, virtues. We're more than just the way other people see us. We're a mix of all of these things. Um, and if we didn't have the skepticism constantly reminding us, it would be really easy to fall into the trap of saying that, well, the memory is the way to go. The memory trick is the way to go. Or one of the other ways that different philosophers across the year, generations have said, these are some pretty good ways of looking at it. But at the end of the day, we have to start looking at the negative aspect of it, the moral responsibility, concern for ourselves. Um, what happens if we don't take the moral responsibility, if we don't take the concern for ourselves? This is going to come in later on in the course when we start dealing with ethics. The ethics not only of time travel, but the ethics of Doctor Who himself, how he acts, how he responds, how he does things. And we're going to see that everything about him has a sort of moral compass. And if he didn't have a set personal identity that we can identify, he wouldn't have that moral compass that would allow us to see the moral workings um, of him. So the skepticism is what ultimately becomes the best argument for us. It's saying that there has to be some idea of personal identity, however we define it. And many people define it differently. But the main thing that I want you to take from this lecture this week is that identity is fluid. It changes from person to person. It changes from myself, John. It changes from when I interact with a student, when I interact with a parent, when I interact with a friend, when I interact with a family member, when I interact with my boss. I have different identities that are there. I have different identities from how people see me and of how I see them. And so we have a multitude of fluid identities that are always um, hovering about us and determining what our true identity is.